Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. How many of you were not were not here yesterday? Put up your hand. Oh, a lot. A lot of people. You're very welcome. And I hope the Lord is going to bless you as much today as he blessed all of us yesterday. You know, brothers and sisters, I have one great ambition in life. My humility doesn't transcend this ambition. Uh, great at all as my humility is, as far as Don reminded you. Um, and it is this, to outsell Sister Breeze <laughs> in tips. To sell more tips than Sister Breach. Now yesterday I was asking some people here about the sale of the tips. And they said, Father, you're doing well. <laughs> and last evening I asked again. They said, you're trailing rather badly. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you'll help me with my little... It's not a... It's not a very big ambition, you know that. It's not. I mean, it's... But it would help me a lot. I struggle with many things, but this would, would help me greatly. And one of the conferences where we went to, you know, I went round to see... I don't do this all the time, you know, but I do it an odd time, you know, to see how the tapes were selling. And The girl said to me, Oh, gosh, Father, she said... All Sister Breeders' tapes are all sold out, you know. And she said, and we sold some of yours too. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> well, you're great. Thanks. Uh, thank you. I'm glad. It's great to see People with, there's not one for everyone in the audience. Get away there. Yeah. <laughs> everyone in the audience, if they want one, they got to buy one. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great, though, to see such a sense of, of joy and, and humor amongst you this morning. And I know that, you know, God who really blessed us yesterday with his great love and mercy and kindness is going to bless us again this day. So let us now become more serious and just turn to the Lord once again. Ask him to help us. Lord, we ask again for the help that you alone can give us, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon our minds and our hearts, so that we may be able to listen, to hear the word which you speak to us each day in your church. Lord, fill us with your love and with your grace. Mary, Mater Misericordiae, Mother of Divine Grace, Seed of Wisdom, pray for us. Last year I met Father George Kosicki, who you know addressed this conference uh, a couple of years ago, and who is a great proponent, a great advocate, a great... Um, um, devotee of the Divine Mercy. Father George was also the man from whom I received the inspiration about the intercession for priests. He started that, you know. And uh, he helped me greatly in many, many ways. But I was talking to him last year and he was telling me about somebody whom he met who was inquiring about the Divine Mercy. And George was, he was asking, what is this? You know, this man was asking, what is this Divine Mercy? And George was telling him, and he said, um, Oh, not another devotion, not another private devotion, he said. You know, as if to say that, you know, we didn't need any more private devotions. And of course we know, brothers and sisters, don't we, that the private devotion is really the essence of the spiritual life. We know and we believe, of course, that there is nothing like the sacred liturgy. There is nothing that compares to the celebration of the Eucharist. You know, a couple of weeks ago I was unvesting after saying Mass. I was saying Mass 
I think for Sister Breach and one other person in her convent in the, in the United States. And I was just taking off my vestment, you know, minding my own business. And I felt I heard the Lord saying to me about the celebration of the Eucharist. And it was a word like this. I felt the Lord was saying, never forget the sacredness of what you do. Never forget that there is no prayer meeting, no praise meeting, no song of praise that even begins to compare with the praise and glory and worship that I receive through the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And that's true, brothers and sisters, you know. And the church gathers us every Sunday. Or rather, Jesus gathers us every Sunday to hear the word of God, to listen to the word which is read to us and proclaimed to us. And of course, to come then and receive the bread of life, to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. And having received Jesus in Holy Communion, to receive all men and women then in the course of our lives thereafter. But at the heart of our spiritual life, there is a privacy, isn't there? And there is a way in which God speaks to us. And I'd like this morning just to spend a few moments talking to you about just the different ways that God speaks to us. And the reason we're here, brothers and sisters, this weekend, let's face it, is because God speak, spoke to uh, Blessed Faustina. That Jesus spoke to her, revealed something to her. And that is something that has, that has happened. It has happened, of course, during the entire course of divine revelation in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, of course, God spoke to Mary, as we remembered yesterday. And God spoke to St. Paul and to all the apostles. And Jesus taught them. God spoke as the letter to the Hebrews reminds us most magnificently in the person of Jesus Christ. You remember what, what Jesus said to Philip when, Jesus, when Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. And that'll be enough for us. Enough? He said, show us the Father, and that'll be enough for us. And Jesus, you remember what Jesus said to him? Jesus said, Philip, he who sees me sees the Father. In other words, that, that as the scriptures tell us, especially the letter to the Hebrews uh, and St. John, his beautiful gospel, that Jesus is the perfect revelation. He is the last word of the Father. And the, the uh, fullness of divine revelation is to be found in Jesus Christ and in all that he has spoken to us. So there is a difference then between divine revelation, which is uh, summed up for us and presented to us rather in, in the scriptures, in the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and in the magisterial teaching and tradition of the church. That is the, that's the divine revelation. It's presented to us in that way by the church. But also there, of course, is private revelation. God speaking to individuals privately and through that um, influencing the history of the church. We see this most graphically illustrated for us, of course, in the lives of the saints. Down, you know, we, we believe, as the church tells us, that divine revelation ended, divine revelation, the official revelation of the Lord, ended with the death of the last apostle. But the process of revelation, the charism of revelation which has existed in the church from the beginning continues through the action of the Holy Spirit in the lives of individual people. And as I say, we see this most particularly in the lives of the saints. Take, for example, somebody like St. Francis of Assisi. 
Now, when, when the Lord, Lord said to told St. Francis of Assisi, go and rebuild my church, Francis, Francis thought he was talking about the, you know, the, the little church, church of San Damiano uh, nearby. And he proceeded to get some stones together and started building. Not that he was a great uh, mason or a stone cutter, I'm sure. Um, but, but that wasn't what the Lord meant at all. He meant, he meant to rebuild his body, the church. church. And, and we know, of course, now, now after, after all these years, years the extraordinary impact that St. Francis, Francis had in his day for the, the renewal of the church, church and continues to have for the upbuilding and renewal of the church. church. So, so he, he, was, was, he was somebody who received, received this word from, from the Lord, that this revelation from God. God. One, One person, person I, 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 I love, love very, very much is St. Catherine, Catherine of Siena. And, and one, one of the, lo the, the little known facts, facts about St. Catherine, Catherine of Siena that I love to tell people is, is that she was the 26th child, child of, her of her parents. Wasn't, wasn't it lucky, lucky for the church and for the world that they didn't stop at 25? Not, not that I'm recommending that, you know. But St. Catherine of Siena is... is one, One of, of the, the great, great mystics, mystics of the church. church. She, she taught herself how to, how to read, read and write. And, and some, some of, I mean, her, her, her writings are amongst the most, most profound mystical, mystical writings that, that we have in the, in the Catholic, Catholic Church. church. But, but at, at the time St. Catherine, Catherine was living, there was a great, great, great scandal in, in, in the church concerning the papacy and the Pope. Uh, had, had to leave Rome, Rome and go to Avignon, Avignon in France, France famous, famous Avignon, Avignon exile. And, and St. Catherine, Catherine received, received a word from the Lord that she was to go to the Pope and say, Holy Father, get back, get back to Rome. Rome. Get, back get back to Rome, Rome where you belong. You belong. And, she and she went, went to Avignon and, and, and um, through the power of her holiness and the power of the word that God gave to her, she was she able to bring, bring an end to the scandal, and the Pope, Pope returned again, again to Rome, Rome where he was. We have, we have I mean, the, 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 the history, history of the church is replete, replete is filled, filled with examples, examples of such people. people. Saint Ignatius of Loyola. Somebody, Somebody has said that Saint Ignatius of Loyola did for spirituality, but Einstein, but Einstein did for physics. He was, he was such. such such, such a, an, an extraordinary and a beautiful, beautiful man, man of God. God. Such, such a, a humble servant, servant of the Lord. And God, and God spoke, spoke to him and, and revealed, revealed to him what he was to do and he found the Jesuits and of course you know, we know the extraordinary the impact that they had in St. Vincent the Twelfth. Of course, St. Patrick. How could I forget St. Patrick? I'm sure St. Sure Patrick, Patrick when he got on that boat you know, with all those dogs and pigs, pigs when he escaped, escaped from Ireland, you know, he said, thank, thank you, Lord, Lord, I'm out of this place forever. forever. Little, Little did he know. And how, and how God then, then you, know, the you know, the Spirit, Spirit of God, God sent in a, in a dream this Irish, Irish man and said, holy, holy youth, come, come back and walk, and walk among, among us once, once more. God, God speaking, speaking to him and revealing, revealing to him his mission. And, and of, course, of course, the rest, the rest is history, isn't it? I mean, the extraordinary and wonderful, wonderful charism, charism of this, of this man, man, Patrick, which, which thank, thank God, God the faith, faith that he gave to us is alive, is alive to this day. It's an, it's a, it's a, I was talking to Sister Beats about this when we were in, in Kenya, Kenya, brothers and sisters. One of the, one of the things that we have noticed in, in, our, in our travels is this. Is this. That where, that where you have, have Irish, Irish missionaries, Irish, Irish sisters, sisters lay, lay people, people, and of course, of course the priests, priests Columbans, Columbans, the Catechans, the Holy Ghost Fathers, Fathers and, all and all the various um, um, congregations, congregations who have sent missionaries out around, around the world. The thing, the thing that we have noticed is that, is that where you have Irish, Irish missionaries preaching, preaching the gospel to people who have never heard it, those, those people receive an extraordinary gift of deep, of deep strong, strong faith. faith. Which, of course, Which of course is, is the charism, charism the grace, grace that St. Patrick, Patrick has given, has given to, the to the Irish people. And long, and long may it last in our midst, brothers and sisters. 
But God, but God is, 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 is constantly revealing himself. himself. He's constantly speaking, speaking in the hearts of young people. And you know, people, you know, people are worried today, today that there are no vocations, there are nobody, there are nobody entering the sisters, the sisters. Their their seminaries are empty now. now. And, and I suppose, I suppose should we should be worried about that, you know. And we're all, and we're all saying to ourselves, what can, what can we do about, about this? I was at, I was at a, we gave, we a, gave a retreat last year to a diocese in the United, United States, and these, and these priests were talking, were talking you know, one, you know, one day, day at, um, at, um, at lunch about, about the, the, the recent, the recent diocesan, diocesan convention, convention that they had, that they had you know, projecting, projecting the future of the diocese into the next, into the next 20 years. years. And, I was, and I was listening to these characters, you know, and, and I couldn't, I couldn't after, after a while, I couldn't take any more of this. And I, and I said, I said, I said no, you know, fathers, this, this sounds, sounds like, like a convention, a convention of undertakers. undertakers. I said, you, I said, you seem to be gathered here to preside, to preside over the funeral, the funeral the of the obsequies of the diocese. Of the diocese. What, what was it that they had, that they had forgotten? But what they had, what they had forgotten, forgotten was that God, that God, you know, God, God doesn't, doesn't depend, depend on what we can do to, to assure, assure the future of the church. I mean, when Our Lady, when Our Lady came, came to knock, knock before, before Our Lady, Our Lady came, came to knock, you could have, you could have easily, easily written, written the epitaph, epitaph of the Irish of church. It would have seemed a timely moment to write it. The Ireland is finished, the church is finished. And then, she, and then came. she came, and then, and then began, began brothers and sisters, you cast your mind just back, back to, to, to think about, to think about this, began, began one, of the, one of the greatest movements of grace, of grace one, of one of the greatest charismatic movements that the Irish, that the Irish Church have ever seen, because, because God then raised up all these, all these women, women and men, and men you know, who started, you know, who started these, societies these societies and who and brought an, an extraordinary renewal, renewal into the Church, not by, not by their own efforts. But how? But how? Through, the, through power the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, and so if you're inclined, if you're inclined to, to be depressed about the state, about the state of, the of the church in Ireland, Ireland at the moment, don't, don't get, get depressed just yet. Just yet. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? <laughs> don't, don't get, get deeply, deeply depressed, depressed just, just yet. yet. Wait, Wait and, see and see what's going what's to happen. Going to happen. Because God, because God acts, acts in a sovereign, sovereign way. way. He does not. God is, God is not. You see, this is the thing, that, is the that, thing we really that we really must remember, remember brothers and sisters. You know that the work, the work of, of the church, the church is, the is the work of God. It is not. It is my not work. my work. What could, what could I do? What can I? What can I do? What can you? What can you do? And so the work, so the work of the church in every age and in every place is depends upon the Lord. But what I, but what I, 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 I suppose what I want to say to you this morning, brothers and sisters, is this that, you know, as far as, far as you yourselves are concerned, are concerned to, be to be constantly open, open, have, an open have an open mind and an open, and an open heart, heart to, what the, to what the Spirit of God may want to may say, want to say in, your in your life. And don't say, and don't say to yourself, oh, well, now God might speak to Sister Breed, or He might speak to Father Kevin, or He might speak to Father Cal, or somebody else, you know, but God would never speak to me. Do you know why you're, you know here, why you're here this weekend, weekend, brothers and sisters? Because God, because spoke, God spoke in your heart, in your heart and, moved and moved you in the spirit to come, to come here. That's why you're, That's here. Why you're here. God spoke, God spoke to you. He maybe, he maybe didn't speak in your ear. And so the God, so the God is constantly inspiring individuals, individuals in the church to do great things, things for the Lord. But, but you know, for, you know, the, rest for the rest of us, he inspires us to do little, to do little things. things. That may, have that may have great effects in our lives. In our lives. For, example, for example, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure there were people here yesterday, you know, who, were, who, who, were, hadn't, who hadn't thought, thought of going, of to, going to confession when they came in, the, they door came in the door yesterday, yesterday morning. morning. But when the, but when the, the, when the opportunity was provided, was provided they, were they were inspired by the Lord, by the Lord and said, I must go and unburden myself to Jesus. I must go and ask him to forgive me and to heal me and to release me from this burden. God, it's God, God speaking in your heart. 
couple of years a couple ago, years ago years some years ago, about maybe 10 or 15, 10 or 15 years, ago, years ago, I had an example, had an example in my own life, life an, an, amusing an amusing one. And I, and the, I, person I the person that, this, that was involved, that was involved in this encounter is here this morning. I'd love to, I'd speak, love to, to speak to her before I say, before anything. I say anything at all. I was giving, I was giving a, a retreat a, a in Nock. And it was one of these, we had a healing mass. And we prayed, and for, we healing prayed for healing during the Mass, during the mass and, and at communion time, communion time this, was before this was before I worked with, I worked with Sister Breach. Or should I say, or should I, I, say I worked for Sister Breach. <laughs> yeah. I keep saying, I keep saying to Sister Breach, Sister Breach, aren't you privileged, aren't you privileged to be working for me now? now? And she says, and she well, says well, thank God I'm thank not working, working for you, that I'm working for Jesus, you know. Anyway, anyway, I was I was come to the communion, come to the time, communion the mass, time in the mass, and I was giving and a I was giving communion standing, standing up at the front, the middle aisle, middle aisle of the church, minding my own minding business. my own business, and in my and heart, in my heart, I heard I heard a voice me. saying to me, "Look, look at the woman, at the woman with the red with the red hair." hair. Hear me giving a look at the woman with the red hair. I said, I I said to myself, whatever I do, whatever right, I do right now, I'm not going to look, I'm not at, going to look at any woman with red hair. But and I continued to give a communion. And again, this voice sounded in my heart or wherever and said, look, look at the woman with the red hair. So, so, I said, all right. So I looked down. So I looked down. Just leaned out and, leaned down, out and looked the down the line of people, of people, people who were coming up to receive communion. Receive and, communion. Sure and sure enough, about two thirds about way, down, thirds the way down the church was this young woman, this young woman with, with a gigantic, gigantic head of magnificent, of magnificent red hair. Red hair. So, and as, so and as I looked down her, at her, he, she leaned out, leaned out and looked straight, and into, looked my straight into my face. And then she sat, and then she sat down, down on, the chair. on the chair. I said, well, Lord, I looked at the woman with the red hair and she sat down. So, so in due course, in due she, course came up, she came up to receive Holy, to receive Holy Communion, and I gave, and her, Holy I gave her Holy Communion. And when I went into, the, I went into the sacristy after, after Mass, mass was, finished, was finished, I said, I said, as I do, as I do, a lot of times, I, lot of time, I spoke to the Lord. I said, Well, Lord, you know, you better, you better explain, explain to me what this thing, what about, this thing about the woman with red hair was all about, because I'm perfectly certain she's going to be standing in the back of the church waiting for me when I'm going out. And brothers and, sisters, and brothers and sisters, as clearly as, clearly as, if, as, it, as if, if it were yourself, I heard, I heard this, this, this thought, this thought, word, this word dropped, into dropped into my mind, into my heart, into my, heart, into my, consciousness. Into my consciousness. I felt the Lord, I felt the Lord saying to me, "Tell this woman, tell this woman, how grateful, how grateful I am, I am to her for what she, for has, what had she has had to suffer during during pregnancy. her pregnancy." And I had noticed when, I, I, had noticed when I was giving her communion she was that she was far very on far on in her pregnancy. In her pregnancy. So, so, sure enough, when, sure I enough out, when I went out, church, down the church, and there is the woman, standing, is the woman standing, and she says to me, and Father, says to me, Father, Father she says, came over and she says, Father, can I talk, can to, I you? talk to you? And I said, now, before you, said, say, anything before you say anything to me, to me let me talk to you. And I said, and I said the Lord, wants the Lord wants you to know how gratefully, how gratefully he is to you for all that you've suffered and all that you've had, to, that you've had to put up with and all the, and anxiety, all the anxiety you've had concerning, concerning this, pregnancy. this pregnancy. And she sat down, and, she and, sat began, down and began to weep. To weep. And when she regained, her, when composure, she regained her composure, she said to me, she said to me Father, Father, you have no idea. You have no idea. Of what, I have of what I have suffered this last few this months. Last few many months. Times, How many times I came so, I came so perilously, perilously near, near to, losing this, to child. losing this child. And I said to her, I, said I, said I, to her, I said, I don't. I, know nothing I said, I know nothing about, about you. you. I said, I'm sure, but I said, that, I'm there sure that there is something God special. That God has something special, special in store, in store for you, for you, and for this child. And for this child. And, and, she, and went away, she went away. And I never saw her and again. I never saw her again. But I've had many experiences. But I've had many of course, of course Sister Breed is constantly having experiences like this, you know. like this, you know. How the Lord, how the Lord, in His mercy, you know mercy, the thing that moves, you know the thing that moves that, me about that, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, brothers and sisters, sisters about that encounter, it never, never fails, fails to move me every time I remember it. You know, is this, is this, this sensitivity, sensitivity 
the tenderness, the tenderness, the mercy, the mercy, the beautiful, the beautiful consideration, consideration and compassion, and of, compassion the Lord, of the Lord that He would use a that He would use like a fool like me to give to a give message a message to this woman to this woman, which I'm sure had which I'm sure had a great impact upon her life. That's the kind of a God. That's that the kind have. of a God that we have. And that's, that's, and that's, why, that's, that's why, why this whole, you know, this whole movement, you know, this whole of, movement of divine mercy is beautiful. so beautiful, you know, because God knows, because God heard knows we've heard long enough, you know, about the justice, about of, the God. justice of God and the fear of God. And the fear of God. And you know we have and, all. You know we have all. Sat, I, I, sat, I, I remember sitting as a boy, you know, in my in, in, the, in, parish, in, the, in the parish church in Irvingstown, up in Irvingstown, up in County of Manly, you know, listening to the missioner, you know. And I said to myself. Will I ever get through? Will I ever get through? Will I ever save my Will I ever soul? save my soul? If it's going to be this fear of God, the fear of God, strong in me those strong days. in me those dread days. Of God. Dread of God, not the fear of God. So I thank God. That so I thank have, God that we have, we have a Lord. Who we have a Lord who is merciful, is merciful and kind, and kind to us, and who speaks, to us and who speaks in our hearts words of love. Words of love. You know. Just to come back for a Just moment. Just to come back for a moment, and I finish in a few seconds. Um, um, how does God speak How to does us, God speak normally, to us brothers? normally, brothers and sisters? Just to be mentioned, just to be mentioned to you yesterday. And it's something that I like to say you to people. And I, well, you and I, as Catholic people, we never really, we have, never to really have to discern very much, very much concerning, what, concerning we what we are to believe as Christians, as, Christians, as, followers, of Jesus, as followers of Jesus, and how we are to, and how we are to act. Words, no, about, about the, the doctrine, words, that, we the believe, doctrine that we believe, or about the morals that we live. That live, guide our lives. That guide our lives because these, this teaching, these, this teaching already, is already clearly, clearly defined for us, defined for us and illustrated for and us, illustrated for us in, the in the teaching of the church. And so, and so, in any given day, uh, any given we, don't day we don't have to worry about that. You know. But still, but still, there are so many there are so many dissenting voices now. Voices. Before, now, the, end before the end of this week, before, week, week, before the end of this month, the Holy Father is going to publish a letter. A letter concerning, concerning the whole question, the whole of, question human of life. human life. He's going to deal with abortion, and in vitro fertilization, and, vitro fertilization and, euthanasia, and, and euthanasia, and all of these things. And I'm sure, you know, and I'm it's sure, like, you know, if it's like teachings, his other his teachings other, and his other encyclicals, it will be, it will be surpassingly, surpassingly beautiful and crystal and clear. crystal clear. But wait, to you but see. wait, do you see? How it will be received. How it will be received. Even by those, Even within, by those the church, within the church who have a right, who have a right to assent and to, to, assent obey, and to obey the magisterial teaching, the, magisterial the authoritative, teaching, the authoritative that contained, teaching that is contained in encyclicals like this one, like that, will this one that will be coming out. You know. And of course the media. And of course the media. <laughs> our old friends. You know. Our old friends. You know. They will. They will. They will. Surely, they will surely go to town. Go to town on this. Be prepared for that. Be prepared for that. You know. But as for, but as me, for me and you, brothers and, and, sisters, you brothers and sisters, let us listen. Let us listen. Let us listen. Let us listen with faithful hearts. With faithful, faithful hearts, hearts, with open minds. To what the Lord will, to what the Lord will say to us through this beautiful teaching of the Holy Father. The Holy Father. So the church. So the church. Oh. I was in a hotel room, I was in a hotel in, room in, somewhere in, in, the, United somewhere in the United States, States in the last year, you know, and, um, you know, and um, I was listening to the I was listening to the radio to the radio, and uh, I was polishing and, uh, my shoes. I was polishing my shoes at the time. At the time, the person who normally the person who normally shoes polishes my shoes had the day off. Had the day off, so, <laughs> so I had a polish to myself. I had a polish to myself. You know. <laughs> Don says he had the day Don off. says he had the day off today as well. So. I was listening to this. Preacher. I was listening to this preacher. No. And this preacher was. And this preacher was. He kept. He was preaching very beautifully. He was preaching very beautifully, you know, and as they do, very, do, very, very beautifully about, about Jesus, you know. But he kept saying. But he again kept again saying again, again and again and again. I believe. I believe. I believe. Or he said this to the next. I believe. The next, I believe. He kept saying I believe. He kept saying I believe. I believe. And I. I, and I, I was thinking to myself, I, you know, I was thinking myself, you know, what is the difference between this man, listening to this man, listening to this man, and say, listening to a Catholic, 
preacher. And the difference is, of course, the difference is, of course is that while he was saying, I believe, he while he, as a, an evangelical Protestant, kept saying, I believe, kept saying, I believe a Catholic priest would probably, Catholic have, priest said, would probably have said, and I myself would probably what? say, what? As the church, as the church teaches, us. teaches us. As the church teaches us. As the church teaches us. And see, that's, that's the difference. And see, that's, that's the difference. And that's between. why there is, and that's why know, there is in, you know, in most Catholics, there is always tension between, between um, 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 what, um, the church what the church teaches and how, and believers, accept how believers accept it. You know, in some of the Protestant, you know, traditions, some of the Protestant traditions, you can believe what you want. You to. can believe what you want to. And they they let you get they divorced. They let you get divorced. They let you get abortions. They let you practice euthanasia. They let you use contraceptives. They let you do all those. There's no real tension there. There's no real tension there at all. But for us Catholics, but for us Catholics, you know, always kind of unhappy. Always kind of unhappy, aren't we? There's always a kind of a worried. There's always a kind of a worried look in the Catholic's face, you know. Because of this tension. Because of this tension, you know. And see, that's because that's because what Jesus said that it is not an easy thing. But we must. But we must be listening. We must. And we must be listening, uh, be listening church, especially to the church, what the bishops us. teach us. And I know that there's a great, and I know that there's a great, there's a great attempt being made. Let's not, you know, let's call a spade a spade, brothers, brothers, brothers in this country at the moment. In this country at the moment, there's a great, <clears throat> there's a great being made attempt from being made to completely undermine the teaching authority of the church. That's going on right now. That's going on right now. But we have to be, but we have to be, we as faithful people must must trust the Lord who. That the Lord who I will said, I will be with you even to the end of time. Not that the Lord will not abandon his church. There's a whole lot of other things I wanted, There's to, a whole say lot of things I wanted to say on this, brothers and sisters. But unfortunately, I haven't time. But you've heard enough just as it is. You know. ask just the Lord ask the Lord to speak in your heart. To speak in your heart. But be sure, but be sure when, you that, when you do that that you're ready to listen. That you're ready to listen. And that you're ready, and that you're ready to do what he says. To do what he says. One of the things that worries one of the me things that worries about, me you know, we'll, about we'll you know we'll, we all look forward to this from monthly Medjugorje, message from Medjugorje, you know. I don't anymore. I don't anymore. Well I do, really, you know. Well I do, the really. Reason, you know why I don't but the reason you know why I don't I, will, I feel I don't I will I feel I don't because is because I did so little I did so little words. about the last words that we heard. You know. That we heard. You know. So so just ask the Lord today to, give you, the Lord today to give you that of spirit, openness of heart and spirit to be able to listen to listen and to follow him and to follow him. And trust always and to trust always in his loving kindness, in his loving kindness, in his mercy, no, matter, his mercy you, how no matter how difficult the situation of your life the situation of your life may be. Thank you very much.